I just set up the biggest skateboard that I've ever skated in my entire life. This is the Heroin 10 inch Curb Killer 4 guest model from Ira Ingram, the Curb Killer himself. So this is a 10 inch symmetrical deck. It's 32.3 inches long and has a wheelbase of 14.3 inches. But like normal egg boards, it tapers down towards the kicks and ends up being 9.5 over the trucks here. So with that and the shorter wheelbase, these boards don't actually feel as big as they sound when you're riding them. So I'm so keen to skate this today. I've been riding the 9.5 Heroin egg lately, so this shouldn't be too much of a big increase going up half an inch. My only concern is that I'm still running the 8.5 trucks and this is 9.5 over the truck. So my trucks are sitting in a half inch on either side, but it is absolutely freezing today. So I'm gonna get a quick warm up in and then go over why I think skateboards keep getting bigger and bigger over the years. So back in the 90s, people were riding either a 7.5 to a 7.75 inch board, which is considered so small these days, but anything eight inches or above was considered massive. But the style of skating back then was more technical flip tricks, ledge tricks, and manual tricks. So a board around a 7.75 kind of catered to that type of skating, the technical side of skating, since a smaller board is lighter and would be easier to flip and control into technical flip tricks and grinds and manuals and stuff like that. And if my memory is correct, it was around 2008 to 2010 where handrail skating become really popular in the skate scene. And a lot of pros were seen riding bigger boards to accommodate for that type of skating. So a wider board is gonna be more comfortable and stable and having wider trucks is easier to lock into your grinds on handrails. I myself moved up to an 8.5 inch board around that time when I started getting more into skating flat bars and little handrails and stuff. I used to ride an 8.25 as a teenager, but around the 2010 mark is when I stepped it up. Now fast forward 10 years to 2020 when all of us are in lockdowns and have nothing to do. So many people were getting back into skating around this time because skateboarding was also seen as exercise so it was a loophole so that kind of allowed you to still go outside and hang out with your friends during the lockdown period and all of these people getting back into skating had aged their feet have grown they've put on some weight as well so the 775 boards that they're coming back to just didn't suit them anymore they were way too small and too hard to ride and by this point the skate community's board sizes had grown as well so the normal size was about an 825 to an 875 so all these guys getting back into skating had to upsize to accommodate for that even nowadays a nine inch board isn't considered that big anymore and that's for normal type of skating too so not just transition bowls and slappies people are riding these big boards and doing flip tricks downstairs skating the rails and gaps as well so also around the 2020 mark curb skating becomes so popular and just started blowing up and for good reason too it's so fun to skate curbs it's low impact it's fun to hold long grinds and slides and it's just a new type of skating that doesn't involve really ollieing or locking into your tricks so anyone can start learning how to do slappies and this is where shaped boards especially egg shaped boards become way more popular because they have the pointed nose and tail so it makes it a lot easier to get into slappies Grinds. So these shape boards have continued to gain more and more popularity around the skate community and they seem to be getting bigger and bigger as well with no negative effect to curb skating since the bigger the board the more stable the more control you're going to be in and this type of skating doesn't really involve a lot of flip tricks so you don't have to worry about trying to flip a big board like that. These types of boards have become so popular that it's not just curb skaters and bowl skaters that skate these shape boards and even pros like Frankie Villani, Curran Caples, Rowan Davis they all have pro shaped boards as well not just popsicles and if you look at the level of their skating and the the tricks they're doing it's actually insane and I've talked about this before having a shaped board under your feet it just makes skateboarding so much more fun looking down at your feet and seeing an egg board or a shape board takes a bit of stress away from trying a hard trick it makes you just feel like you're cruising around having fun so I absolutely love the egg shape boards so that's personally why I think boards have been getting bigger and bigger over the years but I want to hear from you guys why do you think boards keep getting bigger let me know in the comments below and also let me know what the biggest board size you've ridden is so as I was warming up on this board I found two things that I really love about this board and one thing that I don't quite like 
like about it. So I'm gonna go skate some rails, ledges, transition, see how this thing goes with flip tricks since it's so big, and then get into what I like and what I don't like about this board. But to do some justice to the curb killer, there's two really good spots around here that have curbs there. So I'm gonna go and skate them after this, but let's get into these tests first. These little ride-on cutouts here are so fun. Shout out to Cam Markin for digging out all these holes and making these skatable, because this spot is amazing. Look how good this spot is. Two long ass slappy curbs all the way down. This is going downhill too. And then there's more this way as well. This place is amazing. I'm gonna skate here in a second, but let's talk about the board first. So the board felt amazing straight away. It didn't feel like I went up too far at all. Because I'd been riding the 9.5 egg, this 10 inch egg didn't feel that bad at all. I got used to it pretty much straight away. I've never skated a board that's actually that wide before. I didn't have much of my foot hanging off at all, which made me feel so much more in control. The second thing I loved is how light it felt still. So I've gone up half an inch obviously, but it felt just as light. So I didn't have to get used to any weight differences of a heavier board. The one thing I really didn't like and it felt sketchy though, was because I'm riding 8.5 trucks on a 9.5 inch truck taper here. Yes, it's a 10 inch board but it's 9.5 over the truck so it's sitting in half an inch on either side. This felt super sketchy when I was just doing standard like axle stalls and smith stalls in the quarter pipe where I thought I was locking on. I actually wasn't there and I kept slipping out. So that as well as trying to do some back 50s later on in the session, I kept missing the lock-in and landing in feebles because I needed to lock my heel side wheel and then the toe side wheel and without seeing the truck because it's further in, I had a bit of trouble locking into that. So that was super sketchy for me and I didn't like that at all. So that's the only problem I've come across which isn't the board's fault, it's just because I've got smaller trucks than what I should be riding on this. Board. Once I got used to that, grinding the ledges and rails felt fine, it felt perfect, and the board was really comfortable because of the wider riding surface here that I've got. And then doing the flip trick test here, it wasn't as hard as what I thought to do flip tricks on this thing. Like I said, the board didn't feel any heavier, but the flips were definitely slower. I did all the kick flips in each stance and all the heel flips in each stance. Some of them were pretty sloppy, but I just took the best ones I could get. So I don't want to spend too much time on flip tricks because I won't be doing a lot of flip tricks on this board anyway. So it's feeling great, I'm loving it. I don't know if I'm going to stay on a 10 inch. This is fine to ride here, but I don't think this can be my daily board that I skate all the time. But at the moment, I'm having fun trying different sizes. So that all being said, let's skate these curves here.
man, this spot is so fun. I just wish I could do like cooler combos to make the curb killer proud, but board sliding and nollie lipping the whole thing was super fun. So I had a fun session today. This board is amazing. I definitely recommend you guys try an egg board for yourselves. They're just so fun and you can still do all the tricks you want to do on them. So if you enjoyed this video, check out the 9.5 symmetrical egg board video I did here. That's the first time I rode that 9.5, but the 10 inch is feeling real good right now. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.